The drive was tense. He had a plan he knew his parents wouldn't support, but he knew they wouldn't stop him. He clutched the painting while waiting for the appraiser. He wasn't sure what to say after inspecting the piece. Mark was unique. Unlike most kids his age, he was unique. His peers played sports or games. He sat in auctions and scoured thrift stores and garage sales for hidden treasures. He loved Antiques Roadshow. The show ignited his unique passion. Mark was different because he liked antiques. He wasn't bullied, but he was often excluded from parties. He hated being uncool. Some kids his age couldn't relate to him, and others didn't want to be his friend. They would soon realize his coolness. He watched the documentary that inspired the famous show and knew everything about the guest appraisers. Mark loved learning about antique jewelry, art, and ornaments. His parents had other thoughts. His parents spoiled Mark, the youngest of two older brothers. They didn't understand his love of antiques. He had to beg his dad to stay long enough to buy one painting in a stuffy New Jersey junk house for two dollars. Mark found it easiest to convince his dad to buy the $2 painting. Worse was to come. Mark now focused on profiting from his first investment. If you like my videos, don't forget to like or subscribe. Thanks in advance. He traced the paintbrush and examined the faded paint and wooden frame. As expected. This painting was special. He was unaware of his purchase. The next step required serious persuasion. He had to convince his parents to take him to the nearest roadshow airing in Virginia. His parents caved after two weeks of pestering. He was thrilled when they buckled and loaded the family into the car. He needed his painting's value. Cameramen, hosts, and eager guests were everywhere. Mark smelled old wood, canvas, and metal. Heavenly. He couldn't believe it when they found someone who could help. He recognized him. Freeman Auction House Senior VP David Weiss. He ran up, shook his hand, and raved about the appraiser's show appearances. He gasped. He was surprised by a preteen's reaction. The best part came later. David Weiss is a top American appraiser. Since 1988, he has been a top appraiser for paintings and oriental rugs on the show. He's sharp and knowledgeable. He was Mark's ideal. Why seated Mark at the table and explained the cameras. Mark sat tall and confident. Though nervous, Mark was excited. Mark's unexpected answers improved the interview. He asked what Mark collected. I like glass, sterling silver, and art, he smiled. He also sold his finds online. But market fluctuations meant he had to wait until September to evaluate sterling silver. Mark amazed Weiss. The main event was next. Mark thought it was an Albert watercolor but couldn't confirm. Mark was right, Weiss smiled. Artist Albert knew who is. Famous Dutch painter Albert knew who is focused on 19th century rural family life. Was his work notable? Albert knew who is satin clothes and light filled paintings were unique. His translucent watercolors were famous. The question remained. What's it worth? Weiss asked Mark. Mark confidently said $150. That much money from a $2 investment would have been amazing. Mark's excitement soared when the appraiser's grin changed. It's worth more, Weiss said. Mark sat upright. He looked eager. Parents watched. They ached for their son. What's it worth? Mark exclaimed. He barely sat. The crowd hushed. Weiss believed the watercolor was created in the late 19th century. That makes it worth more than other modern paintings. And you see here, he asked, pointing to the painting. These imperfections prove this painting is original. Mark's mind raced. Ready, teasingly. Yes. Mark said. Your Albert knew who is watercolor would probably sell for $1,000 to $1,500 at auction today. Mark's jaw dropped. He also glimpsed his parents' reaction. His parents gasped at Mark. 
open jord after the surprise they marveled at their son he learned nothing from them he self-taught treasure detection he also struggled to gain their trust shock and pride mark had made money before but this was his biggest haul mark needed the win to prove his competence all investments are risky especially for young investors mark felt old enough smart and well researched this was enough to get his parents to take him seriously not only his parents changed their minds mark became the coolest kid in town after his unique talent and success story were broadcast on tv it was nice to know that other kids understood mark even though he didn't care smart and rich became cool weiss gave mark several compliments that made him blush weiss believed mark was far ahead of other young dealers in terms of potential he also admired mark's instinctive discovery a farm wife and child's muted image changed his parents outlook on the trip did too he had a strong desire to learn more online and visit auction houses amazing mark smiled broadly in the car with his original new who is he loved his unusual hobby most but now he knew he could make a career of it perhaps become wealthy helen across the country was about to discover something life-changing in a painting in her house helen davis never expected this her husband gave her a 70s painting he made beautiful this wasn't just any art the old woman was shocked to discover her husband's secret in the painting helen met paul davis in high school they were each other's first loves they knew everything about each other because they met young helen thought so paul had kept some private matters from her these secrets were revealed years later after marion paul became a businessman and ate out all week helen didn't mind him having lunch with business associates she was accustomed paul's increasing lunch dates with one person upset her her husband had been lunching with a beautiful blonde woman for weeks without telling helen she learned how her best friend worked at paul's favorite restaurant and she knew everything helen confronted paul arrived home to find the woman waiting she demanded that he explain this mysterious blonde woman paul denied all his company valued the blonde woman business lunches helen's friend said their meals were unromantic they avoided touching each other when she was around helen trusted her husband but something was bothering her valentine's day followed helen and paul never liked holidays they valued daily love over annual love helen didn't know this valentine's day would be different paul surprised her helen was stunned when paul returned home he held five huge heart-shaped balloons he gave his wife a huge rose bouquet helen had no words why the man apologized for being so busy and neglecting his wife work had been great for months though good this caused stress and fatigue helen lovingly hugged and kissed her husband she understood completely more surprises followed the bouquet and balloons paul asked helen to turn around while he got something from the yard shed his free time was there helen hadn't visited his domain in a while she eagerly awaited her surprise paul stood in the living room with a self-painted masterpiece when she turned around the canvas depicted their best wedding photo helen knew paul was a good painter but the fact that he had done this painting himself showed he had worked hard and loved it years flew by paul and helen were blissfully married their two sons left home and started families despite her boring life helen was happy paul became ill and things quickly deteriorated paul was bedridden in no time the doctor said he couldn't help the senior paul had little time i see you doctors tried but failed to help the man helen's husband died within days would he take the painting's secret helen told her sons the sad news the family was very emotional helen and her two sons adored paul 
Nun knew Paul had kept a secret for years. The painting he gave Helen five decades earlier was involved. Helen held her husband's hand until death. Paul confessed that he had kept a secret for years before letting go. Helen gasped. After living with someone for a long time and thinking you know them, you find out they've been lying. Her husband shocked her. He suggested she examine the painting. Helen received no explanation. Then he died. Helen took the painting down when she got home, crying. She dusted the top of the frame and rotated the painting. She saw nothing odd. Her husband told her to examine it with his last breath. The old woman hired a local museum art historian. The expert picked up the painting after hearing her story. Phone rang. The historian solved the painting's mystery. Helen drove to the museum. The painting was ready when she arrived. Helen saw many unfamiliar tools and products. The historian revealed the painting's secret. Helen cleared her throat with the art historian. She then revealed her discovery. It's been hidden under paint. The expert said Paul painted over something 50 years ago to hide it. She said only removing the paint would reveal the secret. Helen saw something incredible when the expert scraped off the color. Under the paint was her lover's handwriting. It was not a love letter, confession, or other text. Numbers were scribbled. Helen was surprised. She stooped to read it. Coordinates. Expert asked. Helen re-examined. Why would her husband hide coordinates? Helen examined the painting at home. Helen found a park near her house using the internet. She went there with a shovel just in case. Helen fantasized. What would she find at the coordinates under the paint? Why hadn't he spoken to her while alive? Did he have a dark secret, or was it about the blonde woman she was jealous of years earlier? She hadn't thought about her in years. Helen would discover her husband's long-held secret. Helen shoveled under a large oak tree. The old woman hit something hard after digging about half a meter. Helen slowly excavated the hard object. She saw the red metal chest. She failed to open the chest. She discovered that the padlock combination was their anniversary. Letters were inside. Paul wrote, Dear Helen, if you're reading this, I'm already gone, on the paper. I'll always love you, but we'll eventually part. I may have to dig up this chest and never read this letter. That blonde woman was unimportant. She represented our bank. I have a large sum of money in a safe from my mother. Keys are in this chest. Show this key to a bank employee and he'll open the safe. Love, Paul. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again in the next video.